All right. So welcome. This is DIY self-care. This is the calming embroidery um, uh, workshop. First of all, self-care is not self-indulgence, it's self-preservation. I love that quote, but I think it's especially important in the crazy times that we're in right now. I know it's hard for me. It's hard. I'm sure it's very hard for you guys as students. Um, so I really wanted to do these workshops sort of as a way to um, like relieve some of that stress and just let you guys have the ability to do something you normally wouldn't do. So the goals of this workshop are to learn a new skill. Um, I will say that embroidery is, um, it's fun. Well, I find it fun and relaxing because it's very, you know, like um, repetitive. This, the, it helps you kind of get into a rhythm. And so I'll often sort of have TV on in the background and do embroidery. Um, so you learn a new skill, but that being said, um, you're not gonna be perfect at embroidery right away. Some of the stitches are harder than others. We're gonna do basic ones today, um, but some of them are more difficult than others. So if it doesn't look perfect the first time, don't worry about it. Um, I've had a lot of practice and I'm still, you know, like mediocre at best. Um, the other, another goal is to be able to use your creativity. So hopefully you guys will be able to, um, you know, choose the, the easy, uh, sort of pattern that I set out for you, or you could choose a different one. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you'll be able to hopefully flex your creativity a little bit. And then finally do something tangible. So much of the stuff we've been doing these days is online, like this Zoom workshop. Um, and so sort of one of the goals of this workshop was to allow you to actually do something where you're making with your hands instead of just, you know, clicking on a computer or playing on a phone or whatever, because I know it's so easy for us to fall into those patterns. Um, so everyone should have your packet. Um, and if you don't have a packet, um, well, you should let me know if you did not get your packet. Um, but what you should have in it is a wooden embroidery hoop. And it's, I, I think it's six inches, um, two pieces of fabric. Some of you might have different fabric than everyone else. And that's just because I got two different packs. And for some reason, one was one way and the other was the other way. So there, we'll get to that in a second. Um, you should have needles. So these are all of your needles. You should have a threader. This is what I mean by a threader. Um, you should have embroidery floss and cutters. So I gave each of you a random sampling of I think 11 different colors of embroidery floss. Um, so that it's called fl uh, floss and not thread because the floss as we'll talk about um, actually has six different threads in it and you hardly ever use all six. Depending on which stitch you're using, it'll say like three threads or two threads. So you basically like undo it and then you have like double the amount of whatever thread you have. Um, and then you should also have the cutters. Um, this is what the cutters look like. Uh, tracing paper, so that is for transferring the patterns, which is going to have varying degrees of success, and then the patterns themselves. So I gave you a basic stitches pattern, which is the one we're going to do together, and then I gave you a sloth pattern, a bunny pattern, and a fall leaf pattern, um, and you can just sort of choose the one that you want um, to do. Hold on, we've got a chat. Let's see. Don't have a threader. Um, if you don't have a threader, Luckily, the needles I gave are um, very large eyed needles. So hopefully um, you should be able to do it. Um, I would check down in the bottom of your packet because I put the threader in with the cutters. They should have been in like that. So it's possible it fell out or it's still in the, with the cutters. Um, so definitely check for that. There are different colors. Um, so there's like a red one, a blue one, and a green one. Um, so hopefully you have it. If not, then like I said, the needles I, I bought are big eyed needles, so it shouldn't be too hard to stick the thread through. It just might be a little bit more difficult if you don't have a threader. So anyway. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. I was about to say, I was like, I'm pretty sure I made sure everyone had it because they're very, it can be very annoying if you don't have it. Um, okay. So the first steps, I want everyone to grab the basic patterns which is this, and I want you all to grab the um, 
one piece of fabric. Um, if you have a white fabric, uh, you might want to, you could start with that one. It's a little bit more stiff. I'm just using the thinner muslin fabric. And then um, we're gonna try and transfer. So this can be a little bit tough. The transfer paper itself, the idea is to um, use it to kind of get the outline. And then, it, so you guys, the only thing I did not provide for you is a pencil. So if any of you, so go find a pencil. If you don't have a pencil, then you can try to free sketch with your hand. Um, if you're using this thinner fabric, you can see that it's see-through. So you can actually um, trace on top of it if your light is pretty good. Um, so it really is just sort of up to what you choose to do. Um, but I am going to share over to my second camera now. Um, so you should be able to see all of my stuff. Um, okay, Let's see, have a little light on here. This thing's so cool. So we're just gonna try and make it work. So what I'm gonna end up doing is um, I am going to trace uh, the different pattern through the muslin. You can kind of see how it's a little bit see-through again. So you can try and do that. If you're using the tracing paper, let me grab a piece of tracing paper right quick. If you're using the tracing paper, you need to have a real pencil. It needs to be a graphite pencil um, because with tracing paper, the goal is to actually um, get enough graphite on the tracing paper to where when you do the outline on the fabric, the graphite transfers onto the fabric. Does that make any sense? So essentially what it is, is you would do, you would trace like this. And again, I'm not doing this method, so I'm using a colored pencil, but you would need a regular graphite pencil um, for this method. Or again, if you are comfortable freehanding it, you can freehand it as well. We're not going to do all of these. Um, we're just going to do the most important ones, but essentially you do this, then I know this seems kind of ridiculous, but you flip it over. This is again, if you're using the graphite and you do like this on the back to where you get that graphite, um, from your regular pencil, you get it kind of built up on there like that. And again, this is not going to work very well with the colored pencil. But you do this on every bit of it. And I'm just going to use this as an example. And then you place it on your fabric. Again, this is all before you put it in the embroidery hoop. And then you would press down really hard and trace over what you already traced. And hypothetically, what it should do, again, it's not going to do this because it's a colored pencil is it will have a little bit of an of a stain like an outline from the graphite being transferred over to the fabric. Again, I don't have a regular a graphite pencil and I'm using the thin fabric. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to lightly trace over everything with my pencil. So it's not going to be perfect, but that doesn't matter because you're going to be um, stitching over most of it.
let's leave that set. All right. So that is what you need for that. Let's see if I can change this angle. reason it's backwards. All right, so I don't know why it's backwards, like the actual um, camera angle is backwards. So I apologize about that. Hopefully it won't be too, too hard to follow. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. Maybe I can just I can just do it from, from the side and see if I can make it work. Um, okay, so again, um, just try and get this very basic um, stitch guide um, onto a piece of your fabric, however you can. And you can worry about, um, you know, putting over the other uh, patterns at the end because we're gonna concentrate on this so that you can choose the pattern you wanna try after we kind of go through the steps here. So if you guys could let me know in the chat when you have, or you just give me like a thumbs up or something once you have this on your fabric. Again, um, it doesn't need to be in the hoop quite yet. We can put it in the hoop. We put it in the hoop once you have it. Okay. Looks like we got one. Okay. So once you have it, then you actually put it in your hoop. So the hoop, this awkward situation with my lap going on. Um, so the hoop looks like this. It has two different parts. So it has the inner part and the outer part. And it's super easy to adjust. You just have to um, twist this metal piece right here. And you can see where it um, uses the screw technology to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is take the lower hoop and line up my pattern that I just sketched out. All right, so it's within the hoop right there. And then you press it down and you kind of make sure that your uh, fabric is pretty taut. You wanna, you don't want it to be too loose or else it'll make it, um, you know, it'll be harder for you to actually do the embroidery and then just screw this together until it's tight. And the only place you'll probably have a bulge is right here and you can just sort of pull gently at the fabric to straighten that out a little bit, just pull gently in the edges. So it should look like that. So once everyone is here, then we can actually get started on the basic stitches. Um, we're gonna learn a couple of different ones today. And I have a, I am gonna share my PowerPoint or my Google slides with you after this. And they have um, YouTube videos that are of each of these stitches. So I know you will not remember all of the ones that we did that we're practicing, um, but you will be able to go back and look at those stitches on um, this particular uh, Google Slides. And again, um, a lot of this stuff I got, and I mentioned it at the end of the presentation, is um, I got it from Cutesy Crafts, which is this really wonderful website full of like free embroidery stuff. Um, and she's awesome and she has these great patterns and she has these wonderful videos again where she teaches the stitches that go onto this basic um, stitching pattern. Um, 
And so you'll be able to go back and reference. Um, I know I had to go back and look at a couple of them because I hadn't done some of the stitches for a while. So, um, you know, going back and looking again is no issue that happens all the time. Um, okay, so the first stitch we're going to start with is the one up at the top right here. Um, or not right here, right here. Sorry, like I said, my angle's weird, so I'm trying to figure it out. So right here, and that is the running stitch. You can see it on this pattern here, um, the running stitch. So we're going to start with that. And it is one of the easiest stitches. It's basically what you think about when you think of stitching. Um, so I'm going to grab one of my needles here. I gave you an assortment of needles, so um, it doesn't really matter which one that you use, but um, you know, it's good to have. So I have my needle here, I have my threader here, and I have my thread cutters, which are awesome, super useful. Um, and then just choose any of the colors that you want. Uh, if you want to kind of plan ahead, you can choose a color that you're not going to use for whatever pattern you want. Um, let me see. Let's see. Yeah, so some of, some of you might have gotten two different types of fabric, some of you might not have. Um, if you got the one that has a white, it's so the one I'm using right now is very thin and it's off white um, and it's muslin and it's very thin, like I said, um, but some of you also might have gotten a thicker white um, fabric. And that fabric is actually gonna probably be easier to embroider on just because it is a little bit more stiff. Um, and like I said, the reason that that happened is because I just got two different orders. Um, so it does not matter which one that you use. Um, I would suggest probably if you have the white fabric, um, waiting to use that until for the actual project that you're gonna do just because it's easier to embroider. Um, like I said, this is much thinner um, but it's also the thinner one is easier to trace. So kind of, yes, the beige one is muslin. Uh, the white fabric is, I think it's just embroidery fabric. Um, like you can find it on Amazon. Um, the, I will say with the muslin, um, which I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, the, this particular needle, I got bigger ones because everybody's a beginner here. Um, but that does mean that it makes larger holes in the muslin um, and they're less noticeable in the white fabric. So um, again, just kind of decide which one you want to use based off of uh, what you want your final product to look like. Um, and but it really ultimately doesn't matter all of that much, um, at least not for the purposes we're using today. Thank goodness. Does that answer your question? Alex? Okay, awesome. Um, so again, just choose a, um, a thread that you want that is, um, again, you can kind of choose whether, like which colors you wanna use for your actual pattern you wanna make at the end, or if you, and you can use like the uglier colors or whatever, um, the color you're not gonna use uh, for this basic thread um, stitching, um, pattern. So sorry, I had to undo a, a knot right quick. So I'm going to use this magenta color because I figure it'll be easy for you guys to see. Um, and so one of the keys for embroidery is you don't want to make your thread too long because if you do, then it can get knotted very easily and which is not a, a deal breaker by any means, but it can get kind of annoying. Um, so just keep that in mind as you are um, doing the um, the embroidery. So I'm going to do probably like this long to start with maybe. Um, you can't really see how much that is, but it's about a foot long and I wouldn't go longer than that really, um, at least not for these basic stitches. So I take the needle of the thread cutters and cut off about a foot. Then if you look at the, um, the thread itself, um, you can see that it's got more than, again, it's got six threads to make the floss and they're very easy to come apart, see? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna peel them apart um, three by three. So you have three strands and three strands and that kind of just doubles what we have to work with to actual embroider stuff. 
um, to actually take them apart. You can try and just like rip them down the middle, but sometimes you'll get like, um, like a knot or something. So it's also good to sort of twist at the same time um, against the grain and that sort of helps it come apart. Um, I would say a foot long total, maybe a little bit more. Um, again, and that's just to kind of um, keep you from um, getting lots of knots and stuff as you're, as you're going. Okay. So you'll have two different threads at this point. Um, just gonna set one off to the side. I'm gonna use this one. Um, so if you've never used needle threaders before, they're really awesome. So you take the needle threader, you stick it through the eye of the needle like this. I'm trying to see where you can see. Then you stick the thread through like that. So it's in the, the bigger hole here. And then you pull it through. Woo! So nice. So I don't, um, again, this is a person, this is going to be a personal preference for you guys. I do not tie up at the top here. I just sort of leave um, this little loose thing here and try to hold it with my thumb while I am embroidering. Um, but again, it's going to be up to you. If you want to tie it to the needle, you can. Um, it'll be your workflow. And then I tie the, I do tie the end here. So just gonna do two or three knots. Okay. Just so you've got a knot at the end. Does not need to be pretty. I will say that everything on the other side of this is gonna look real ugly. So don't be worried if it's like not super gorgeous when you're actually, you know, doing, doing your needlework. You just want the, the front to look good. Um, okay, so once you have your thread, it's through the needle, you've got the, the knot at the end. We're gonna start with the running stitch. So the running stitch is one of the easiest stitches. Hang this up. Um, and all you do is you poke, it always, always, when you're doing embroidery, poke up from the bottom, okay? And that's just because it's gonna make it look a lot more clean. You don't want straggly, you know, stuff um, all over your embroidery, okay? So you're gonna poke up once, all right? Go however long of a stitch you want. Generally, um, you know, like a medium stitch, like maybe this size, tends to look good. Um, so do about a length like that and then put it back down through the fabric. And then that's one stitch. Oh, yes, we can pause for a second. So as you're doing the running stitch, um, Again, that's that's a good thread uh, stitch length, at least in my opinion. Sometimes you can get too small. Sometimes you can get too large. Um, I would say you don't really want to get too large. That's probably the worst. Um, but if you're doing, too, what are you doing, Penny? Okay, sorry. Um, so when you're doing um, this again, you don't want to make it too large because that kind of, it can make it harder to keep into a straight line. Um, too small and it just kind of makes it look beady, but if that's sort of what you're going for, then um, it's totally up to you. Um, but I like sort of a nice medium here, which I think is like about a centimeter, something like that. Um, so again, you put it, push it up through the back do one stitch length and then thrust it back um, through the top. And that's where we are now. So with a running stitch, you measure out about the same amount of your first stitch. And then you bring, bring it back up through, measure that same amount and then stick it back through. So the running stitch has this gap in between it. It's not a continuous 
stitch. Um, you separated your embroidery floss, but the threads are not really sticking together. Um, the three threads, if they're not sticking together, you can always twist them back together like the three and they should, you know, kind of get back into formation. Um, they shouldn't all be like stra super straggly. So just try and try twisting them and you'll find that there's a certain um, direction that you twist that makes them come together better. Um, and that should solve that problem. Um, so again, so just uh, kind of keep going um, for this particular running stitch. Some people, um, and I do not recommend this for beginners, um, but some people do this as a bunch. So what I mean by that is they will bring their needle up here. And they will sort of gather the fabric like this and send it through, which takes a lot less time, but unless you're used to doing it, it looks a lot worse at the end. Um, so again, you can do the just thrust up, thrust down sort of situation, or you can kind of scoop up the fabric and um, slide it through like I just did. Um, I don't have a whole lot of room for that and I don't recommend it. So that's why I'm not gonna focus on that particular method, but some people will do it. So um, again, only do that when you get kind of comfortable because it kind of takes you out of a straight line. It's a lot harder to get your stitches aligned. Okay. So that's, that's it, that's the running stitch. It's the easiest stitch in the book. Um, it's a very, very basic. And some of the um, things that we're going to do, or the patterns that I gave you, have that um, as your option. Um, so you can always use that. Yeah, if, it, if it's too taut, then don't worry about it. Don't bunch it up. Um, again, that method is not efficient. So I just wanted you to be aware that some people will do that. Um, OK, so next one um, that we're going to do is Let's let's skip around um, so that let's see. Well, it depends. I guess if you want to make it, this whole training thing colorful, you can add different colors if you want. Um, if not, we can just stick with one color until you run out and then do another one. Um, but we're going to go right next door. So this one is the back stitch. So we're going to do the back stitch. So I'm not going to cut anything um, on the back of my fabric here. I'm just going to um, take my thread over to where this part starts and just start with the back stitch here. Um, so the back stitch is pretty easy. Um, you just pull up again. You always are going to pull up from the back because that makes it look good. Um, then you're going to do one stitch just like we did last time. Then you're gonna go up just like we did with the running stitch, except instead of going forward, we're gonna go back to the end of that first stitch that we did. So it makes a straight line. So again, you go up a stitch length, just like with the running stitch, but then you go back and you put it back down at the end of the original stitch. So up, and then back down. Some of these stitches, like the back stitch, do take longer than others to do. So you don't have to do this entire line right now. Um, this is just so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So there you go. So take a couple of minutes to do the back stitch and get a hang of that. 
again, all these stitches are not super hard. Um, it's just like trying to remember exactly how to do them. And I do provide those videos so that you guys can um, go back and reference as you're making your patterns later. And you can also see that my stitches are not in a perfect line because I am not a perfect person. So, <laughs> so yours probably will not be either. So if they look wonky, that's okay. Okay. So I'll give you another minute or so to do the back stitch and then we'll move on to the next one, which is the split stitch, which is also very similar and very easy. I hope so. <laughs> like I said, I like the repetitive nature of it. It's it relaxes me at least. And then when you're actually building a pattern, it's really fun to watch it like come to life one step at a time. All right. So the next one we're going to do is the split stitch, which is the next line down. It's this one. Oh, that one. Um, and this is a very, very similar one. So essentially, um, you're going to, again, come up from the bottom here. You can get on my line. There we go. Um, oh, I knocked my thread out. I'm going to just re-thread right quick. My bad. So again, you just kind of pop up from the bottom again. You're going to do a regular stitch just like we did with the previous two. Then just like with the back stitch and with the running stitch, you're going to come up another stitch length here. And instead of with the back stitch where you went back right where it was. Instead, you're going to kind of split open these threads and go right in the middle. You can see how it does not matter, you know, if one thread's on one side, two threads are another, it doesn't matter, but you're just going to go straight through there. And you'll see that it makes sort of a little bit of a loop. So when you're using it to embroider stuff, um, it kind of gives an interesting like looping sort of look to it. Um, so again, you're just going to come up another stitch length. And then you're going to go halfway through your previous stitch. And there you go. So again, very similar to the back, back stitch. Um, just like a little bit of a variation. Um, all of the, both of those stitching methods are really, um, um, they're, they're going to make your, your embroidery strong. It'll be hard for it to fray. The running stitch is um, a lot more, um, I guess, a lot less stable of a stitch to use. So if you want something to be longer lasting, the back stitch or the split stitch is really a, a better one to choose.
And this fabric is pretty funny. I find with the split stitch, um, you also get a much straighter split uh, stitch because you're actively going in between the two threads that you've already done or the, I mean, the threads that you've already done. So you end up having it in a much straighter line. Okay, so I'm done with my line and I'm almost done to the, down to the end of my thread. So I am just going to do knots here. I like to hold down the knot because that makes it closer to the fabric. So you make the knot and then you hold it down. All right. I'm just going to grab my remaining magenta thread and you guys keep doing the stitches and then we'll move on to the next one. So the next stitch we're going to do is the satin stitch. So it's going to be this one. Sorry, I'm like, it's hard for me with how it's differently oriented on here. So we're going to do the satin stitch. We're going to ignore the bullion knot. We're going to ignore the blanket. And we're going to ignore, ugh, ugh. oh my gosh. OK, I'm trying to do this while looking at the camera is terrible. The chain, we're not gonna do the chain, we're not gonna do the bullion knot, we're not gonna do the blanket, um, but we are going to do the satin. Um, so the satin stitch is one of the stitches that everyone uses to actually like fill in a shape. Um, so it's one of your options for filling in a shape. And um, it seems pretty difficult, but it's not, I don't know why it's called a satin stitch, um, but it's very easy to do. So they gave us this rectangle here. What I like to do, and this is completely up to you, is um, I like to split it in half. So I'm just lightly doing this so I don't make it too taut. I, I, I mean, get rid of the tautness um, and then split it in half again. And that's just because it's gonna help me to um, fill in this shape. So with the satin stitch, again, what you're doing is you're just filling in this rectangle. And so the way you do it is you start at the top. So I'm gonna to start at this top corner, pull it through, push it back down at the other corner, straight down. So you make a straight line. Okay, so there's a straight line. Um, and so for the satin stitch, to do it properly, you're supposed to always do it from the top. Um, I don't know why, that's just like the way you're supposed to do it. Um, but you can probably fudge here, it's up to you. Um, so then I'm gonna go to the middle one. Down. And then the end one. And again, you're just filling this stuff in. So now I'm gonna do where I divided it here. 
very faintly. Down. Up here. So right now it looks like a bunch of just wide, weird looking straight thingies. Um, so essentially you're just gonna go in the middle of all of these things and go straight down until you fill in everything. So you just keep going in the middle I'm gonna only do this section for right now so I can illustrate what I mean. So then you go in between these here. Straight down. And you can see how it's starting to fill in. And again, then you'll eventually have an entire fully embroidered shape. But the method most people suggest is dividing everything in parts and going through the middle until you fill in the shape. So this does not look fabulous. Again, I'm not perfect at embroidery. I just know the general deal. <laughs> so this part looks relatively filled in, but this has a little gap. So I'm just going to go over here. Fill in that gap. And then there you go. It's solid or semi-solid. Um, and so essentially they want you to do this with this full box. You do not have to do it right now with the full box. Um, just kind of get the gist of what it's supposed to look like. Um, and again, the kind of going and breaking it in half sort of method seems to work for most people um, to help them not, I guess, waste stitching and stuff. But I mean, hypothetically, you could just go next door to a stitch and just kind of build from there. Depends. Just depends. So yeah, so that's the, the satin stitch. Um, as I mentioned, most of these are relatively easy, just a matter of remembering what to do. After this, we're going to do the easiest stitch of all, the straight stitch, which is exactly what one might think it is. So I'm just going to show you the straight stitch, even if you're not done with the satin, with um, practicing the satin stitch, because like I said, it's so easy. It's literally, you are going to stick it up from the bottom here. And then you're going to go to the end of this line. That's all it is one long stitch. All right, and I'm practically to the end of my thread here. I could go a little bit longer, but I'm going to switch colors right quick just because I can. Variation or whatever. Got to the end of those that original foot long that I did. Ah, uh, this super hideous orange color. Should... Yes, you'll definitely be able to see that well. Let's do that. When you're done with your satin stitch and your straight stitch, um, I would recommend getting a new length 
of um, thread. And for um, just because uh, this next stitch that I'm going to show you, which I think is very fun, it's called the woven wheel, sometimes called the spider wheel, um, but it requires a lot of thread. So um, starting with a new thread would be a good idea. But you can still do the, um, you can still divide it and do the three. Um, yeah, you can still divide it and do the three by three. And if I'm moving too fast, I do apologize, um, but I'm just trying to be cognizant of your time because this does take a while and we're already at like 250 and I don't want to waste all of your, your day. Um, and like I said, I'm going to give you the Google slides so you'll be able to go back and see all of the instructions for each th um, type of um, stitch later. So, so if you don't finish each example right now, not a big deal. There are some examples like um, the woven wheel and the fishbone that would take too long to do the entire example. Um, but I'll show you the picture of what it's supposed to look like. Fully done. Actually, I have another example one that I'll just show you. Um, so next we're gonna do the woven wheel, which is this one right here. Yes, I can send the recording out too. Um, no problem. I'm like I said, I'm sending the recording to a bunch of people. So um, definitely can send that out. So we're going to go to the woven wheel, which is one of my favorite stitches because it turns out um, something so pretty. Um, basically, it makes what looks like a rose at the end. Um, and it's really easy to do. Uh, so pick one of the little stokes of the wheel from the outside. You're gonna punch up again, always from the bottom. And then you're gonna go in the middle. Okay, then you're gonna punch up for the next stoke and you're just gonna do that with all the stokes unless you're like me and use your thread immediately. Let's see. Goodness, I am just being terrible about this right now. This is why it's totally up to you if you think that knotting your thread is the right move for you. Because I do end up having losing my thread quite a bit. Now, once you have the little stokes of your wheel, pieces of your pie, whatever you want to call it, and it looks like a star, um, you do not do anything with the circle on the outside. That is just to let you know how big your little flower is going to turn out to be. Um, but you do, you can choose, it does not matter which one, you can choose any little pie section, just get it as close to the center as you can here. You're going to pull that up again, all from the bottom. So again, it's just right next to the center, um, but it's at the bottom here. Um, and now this is the super easy part. 
you're just going to weave in and out. So I'm going to go over this thread, under this thread, over that thread, and just pull it. And you're just going to keep that up. So we went over this thread. So we're going to go under this thread, over that one. You can do it one at a time too. It's just, I've done it so much. I, I'm used to doing at least a couple at a time. So we went under this one. So we're going to go over, over this one, under this one. And you can kind of see how it's starting to go around in a circle. Um, again, you're just weaving in and out very easy. Um, and eventually what will happen is that it'll build up so much that it looks like a rose, sort of. So I just went under this one, so I'm going to go over, under. Like under that one, so over, under. Oh, goodness. There's thunder in my house. You're going to be safe. So again, super easy. Just yes, so I can do a close up. I'm going to try and make it. I just don't want it to be not. Um, oof, let's see. I guess just not as focused close up, which is frustrating. Um, so I was under this thread. So I'm going to go over this one. So I don't need to do anything. And then under this one. And then over that one again. Pull it through. So again, this one, I just came under this one. So I'm going to go over this one. So I don't need to do anything. Under this one. Pull it through. Again, under here. Over this one. Under that one. And pull it through. And you can kind of see the flower starting to to do it. Sorry, it's it's not super um, clear. But again, this is this is a new webcam that we're using. So uh, it's in the beta testing process. And again, you can do this individually, like it is not a big deal. If you don't want to scoop up multiple ones, like I said, I've just done this stitch a number of times. So I'm used to doing it. Um, but it's really, it's really up to you. And if you want to, um, if it gets too bunched up, you can like flatten your flower um, a little, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. Um, but there it is. So I'm going to grab the other example that I have finished so you can see what a finished flower might look like. So that is what it will look like after you just keep going around and around and around. Pretty handy. Lovely. This one's a little bit bigger um, than what we would do. Okay. And this is going to be a good example of what the this one will look like. Because that's another one that I can't do the full shebang. Um, and that's just because it's very time consuming. So I'm going to stop with this particular one. As you can see, I'm on the top and we always want to do come up from the bottom when we're doing embroidery. So I'm just going to make a small stitch here. And go through. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is um, a little bit more complicated. And this one's actually the one that's toughest for me because um, there's like a whole thing where you have to like get get it just right for um, when you are pulling on uh, to make it like a teardrop look um, sort of so it's very easy to like make it too loose or make it too tight. Um, but the lazy daisy is the next one we're going to do. And um, it again, it looks like a teardrop. 
Um, but uh, it, it can be a little complicated. You might be a lazy daisy savant. I don't know, but we shall see. Um, so first thing that you do is you come up at the top of the little, um, like the pointed part of the petal. So you come up to top there. And this is where it gets kind of complicated. You're going to go right back down next to it, but you're going to hold this string so that it doesn't completely go all the way through. Um, so you have a loop here. See how you have this little loop? All right. So you bring it down to about there. Got this nice loop. Now I'm going to look through the loop and see the bottom of the little petal. And you stick it up through the bottom of the petal. Okay. And I want to keep it looking semi brownish, petalish. And again, this is where you just don't want to pull too hard. And then you kind of um, close, you like make it really tight. So you do a tiny little stitch around where you came through the middle of the petal. And that locks the hoop, the loop part into place. So again, this is probably the hardest one that we're doing because it's very hard to explain and um, it can, can be difficult to do. So again, at the tip of one of the little petals, you pull it up, you make a loop and you put the needle right back down right next to where you came through. But you don't want to pull it all the way through. You want to make sure you have this nice loop here. Then right here at the top of your like rounded part of your petal, that's where you want to but bring your needle up and loop it through. And then make a tiny stitch on the other side to pull down the petal. So there you go. So as you can see, you know, I'm not great at the lazy daisy. It is hard. You will probably not be good at it right away. It's very hard. Um, but you have this lovely little flower that you can practice that on. This particular stitch is one I would suggest going back and looking at because um, I feel like the people in the video probably explain it a lot better than I do. And they certainly have it a little bit more close up to where you can see it a little bit better um, because that, you know, is hard to, it's hard to do and it's hard to explain. <laughs> so, um, so there you go. All right, so I don't have a whole lot of this um, particular, um, yeah, um, I don't know why they keep separating. Again, the only thing I would suggest would be to try and like twist them back together before you start the stitching. Um, but um, it's, the like I said, the lazy daisy is very hard. I can show you what my other one ended up being. So. So the actual flower turned out all right, but you can see that I totally walloped one of these little petals. Um, I've done it a lot and I still am not super good at it. <laughs> Just happens. So let's move on from the lazy daisy, just because like I said, it's a hard one and there's no way that you're gonna get it looking good in any short amount of time. All right, so the next one we're gonna talk about is the uh, fishbone, this one. And it's going to end up looking like, oh, this is the back. It's gonna end up looking like this. And um, it's very similar to the satin stitch in that it really is just filling stuff in, except this is a side-by-side -side stuff thing. So if you're doing, a fishbone that looks like a leaf, 
you're going to want to go down the middle a little bit here to make your first stitch. And then right next door, but try and stay on this um, sketched line. You'll kind of put it back in in a similar hole area here. And you're going to go on the other side and do the same thing. And essentially what you're going to do is keep um, stitching like that to where it sort of, do you see how it like fans down a little bit into that point? You're going to want to keep doing that until you get to where um, you can start actually making an angle with your little leaf. So what I mean by that is first couple of stitches are going to be at that same center point that you did the first stitch. Oh, why do I keep doing this? Um, I don't like the fishbone one as much. Um, I don't use it all that often unless I'm doing like leaves or something. Um, and I don't know if any of the ones, the patterns that I gave you actually use the fishbone. So we don't need to focus a whole lot on it. Um, but again, the first couple of stitches will be in the same relative area that you, um, like the same relative hole here. But then as you start getting further down your leaf, you can actually go up a little bit. Okay. And then on the same side, you can go back in that same hole. So you can see how it's kind of starting to make an angle. Sorry, I'm losing my thread, so it's gonna get harder to to see what I'm trying to do, I'll change in a second. So you go up down a little bit more. And I think I'm at the end of this. Um, and then you would go back into that same hole there. And you would just kind of keep going and doing that the entire time. So they would be angled. And then you just slowly move and make your way down. Again, this one takes a long time. So essentially, that's what it looks like. So it starts at the top with this like bunched up area where it's got the, the point starting here. So it actually looks like the stem of a leaf. It doesn't go all the way to the end. Um, and then you fan down like that. Um, ideally, it would be closer together at the bottom. I just started running out of thread, so I made do. All right. I'm not going to tie this off and do that was a bad thing, but don't do what I did. OK. Mm. Is that the last of my orange thread? I think so. Okay. Never mind, I did have the other one. Okay, so after that fun with um, random shapes, we're going to go back to an easier stitch that's very similar to a bunch of the ones that we've already done. Um, and this is called a stem stitch. Um, and so the stem stitch is, like I said, it's, it's a straight stitch. It's very similar. It just has kind of a curvy look to it. So a lot of people use it for the stems of flowers or something like that. Um, but it's very, I would say it's most similar to either the back stitch or the split stitch. Um, so if we're looking, let's see. There we go. So we're going right here to the stem stitch. So right under where we did the woven wheel and the fishbone. So like with the other straight stitches, we're just going to pull up from the top. 
gonna make one normal stitch. But here's where it gets a little bit different is you don't want the stitch to go all the way through. You wanna keep it in a little bit of a loop like this. Um, holding it with your finger is really easy. Um, and that is just because the stem stitch, you go back into the middle here and then you pull up. So you have this very interesting thing. So essentially it looks a little like a curve. Um, I'm gonna show you the picture the finished one that I did with stem stitch. So you can see how it ends up looking sort of like curly at the end. Um, so I just use my fingers and tie it if you're it's too small to tie with your needle. Um, and then really just hope that it'll be okay. <laughs> um, worst comes to worst. Um, and this is like worst, worst, worst comes to worst. And you're actually making something super important that you want to keep forever. What you can do is you can put a little bit of melted wax at the end, and that will definitely make sure that it does not um, come apart. Um, but for the most part, a simple knot will work. Um, okay. So again, you just like with the back stitch, you come out another stitch length here. And again, you want to keep this loop. And then you come back in about halfway through. So another thing to keep in mind is you always want this thread to stay on the bottom and you want this thread coming out of the middle to stay on the top because if you don't, then the stitch will become uneven. And I'll, I'll actually, I can show you an example of what I mean by that right here. So I'm making the stitch, oop, 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 which was bad. It's not what I wanted to do. All right. Um, uh, did I do that wrong? Yes, I did. I went down instead. Sorry, like I said, not perfect. Trying, but not perfect. All right. Okay, so you go out stitch length. So if I keep the loop on the top, and I come up through the middle and come make this part go through the bottom. You see how it kind of made it kind of get off kilter there. So that's why you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you can go through the bottom, but you just want to make sure you're consistent about which way that you do it. So again, what I sort of mean by that is if you come out a stitch length you want to make sure that if this part has been on the bottom, the loop has been on the bottom, it stays on the bottom. And then your mid stitch area, this part stays on the top. Again, it's just for consistency's sake. It will see, you can see how this particular stitch looks wonky compared to the rest of it. So it kind of took away from the twisted sort of nature of it. Um, and again, you can kind of see here that's just supposed to be um, one twisted length all the way down. And the stem stitch is very popular in embroidery. Um, I'm pretty sure most of the patterns I gave you have it in there at some, in some form. Um, so again, feel free to go back and check the videos that I included um, to get a better idea of how to do the stem stitch. 
because that is going to be one of the ones that you need to know. Okay. So the last thing that we're going to do is the French knot. And I find them very fun, um, but they can be kind of difficult uh, to get a hold of. So essentially, we're going to go down to this area here, the French knot. Just choose one of those holes, and you're going to come up right in the middle of the hole. Then you're going to take your thread in one hand. Let me angle myself a little better. And you're going to take your needle and you're going to wrap it around your needle twice. You don't want it to be too, too tight. Um, but you're going to wrap it around your needle twice. And then you're going to stick it right back in. And again, I'm going to show you how to do this again. And then you slowly let that go. So the French knot is kind of difficult. And it's another one where if you don't get it like right, um, like if you don't get the tautness right the first time, then sometimes it can get a little too loose. And I think the reason that it looks pretty loose right now is because I'm trying to go slow for you guys. <laughs> So I'll show you what it's supposed to look like in a second. Um, but again, you poke it up through the top, wrap around twice, and then send it back in. A little bit normal, more normal. Let's see if I can get a good one. There. So that's more what it's supposed to look like. Like I said, since I'm going slow, I think it's um, making me, them not look quite as good. Um, but you pull it up again through the middle. You just do two loops around the needle, stick it back through. And then um, I like to put my thumb over it because it holds it in place and it makes the knot look a little bit better when you pull it in. So again, up, loop twice, back in the same position. Hold down, there you go. French knot is another one that takes time. Oh, sorry, I felt a sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, I felt a sneeze coming on. Um, so that's another one that takes time to get right. So if your French knots look ugly at first, don't worry about it. Um, you can just practice. It's super easy. They're, they're the easiest things. And people love to just like dot their embroidery with them. So like, you know, do French knots for stars or just have them as little like dots around or whatever. Um, and they always look very cute. Um, so those, are the basic stitches that we're gonna talk about. Um, I know it took a long time, so I'm very sorry, but um, this is a test run of this workshop. So the excessive amount of time we've spent um, just is informs me for what I've got to change for later. Um, but these are the basics. And again, each of those stitches that we just talked about, I've got videos for it. So I'm gonna switch over or switch back rather to the PowerPoint. Um, so this is what we just did. 
this is what somebody did as a finished one. Um, you can see we did not do the long and the short, the chain, the bullion knot, or the blanket. And that's just because <coughs> Penny. I'm sorry. I think, <coughs> Penny. I think I'm getting a delivery. So I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. Anyway, um, so this is the final of what we did. So you can see what each of those looks like. And uh, the ones that, that we did not do, again, are a little bit more complicated and not used quite as much. Um, so you're not going to find most of those in, um, in easy beginner embroidery stuff. So that's why we did not focus on them. Um, but here's the how-to stitches. So again, I put YouTube links to each of the stitches that we did here. Um, so you can go back and watch them. And each of the videos is like maybe 30 seconds, just teaches you how to do the stitch again. And you can kind of move on from there. Um, a couple of things to know. Again, the embroidery floss, as you saw, has six threads. Hardly any embroidery requires all six. Um, at, in fact, if you look at the, like take for instance, if you look at the sloth pattern that I gave you, it actually says at the bottom, um, it says like stem stitch, three strands. So that just means it needs three strands. Some of them will say two, um, like, mostly it's two and three. It looks like it's got one straight stitch that requires all six strands. Um, so make sure to read the instructions. The only one that does not have instructions and I'll, well, uh, for that, and I'll talk about it in a second, is the fall leaf, if that's the one you choose to do. Um, another thing to do is make sure you transfer your pattern before you stretch the fabric in the hoop. Um, as you saw, once it's stretched, it's really hard to, to write on and draw on. So it's much better to measure it out and make sure that you've got it put um, where it needs to be before you add it into your hoop. That should be your last um, step before you actually begin to embroider. And the back of the fabric will look really messy and that's okay. It only matters what's on the front. And um, I like to look at the back of my fabric and be like, huh, I made a lot of mistakes, but in the end, it turned out okay. Um, and then finally, you know, just have fun. Like I said, some people get very frustrated with embroidery because it doesn't look great the first time, but it really is just a learning repetitive process that, um, you know, it's just trial and error. Just keep working at it um, and you'll get better. So, um, and even with the easy stuff, um, you can still make something look really good without a whole lot of know-how. Um, okay, so I did give you three pattern options. The easiest pattern, um, minus the lazy daisies, is the bunny pattern. Um, so you can see how it's got the running stitches, which is the easiest stitch. Um, it's got a couple of stem stitches, I think, and then it has the lazy daisies and maybe a couple of French knots for the tail. So that's probably the easiest pattern. Um, not a whole lot, but um, also, you can add a lot of color to that one. So if you wanted to go fun with the colors, you could do that. Um, the medium easy um, is the fall leaf. So for some reason on the pattern itself, it does not say um, like stem stitch, straight stitch, whatever. So if you look at this picture, you can kind of see that um, most of it is a stem stitch around the edges. Um, and you can, this is another one where you can play with different colors, you can do whatever. So it's got some running stitches, it's got some French knots, it's got some stem stitches. I think, um, I think these like blue hoop th looking things are back stitches. And then it looks like a couple of straight stitches up in the corners next to the French knots. Um, so you can make a variation on that. Um, this one I think would be very fun if you had like a bunch of wacky colors and you just wanted to do something. Um, and then the final option is the um, the sloth, which I just thought was adorable. And so the sloth has lots of lazy daisies and it has some woven wheels and it has 
a lot of stem stitching, and then it finally has some French knots that you can see. Um, so you get, a, I think this, this one and this one sort of have the most variation of what you do, you could do. Um, this one, you might have more difficulty getting decent colors to make it look okay. But again, if you want like a psychedelic sloth, I mean, go for it. Um, unfortunately, when I was divvying out colors, I di couldn't really stick to a theme and I didn't want to assume which pattern you guys would want to follow. So I just sort of gave you a plethora of colors and y'all can decide which ones you want to use. Um, and finally, are there any questions? Um, you can ask me now or you can email me um, and I'm happy to respond. Um, if you want to find more patterns online, again, all this stuff I got from Cutesy Crafts. Um, she's really awesome. And when you sign up for her newsletter for free, you get access to all of these free embroidery patterns and it's really great. Um, so definitely check her out if you want to pursue this further or you didn't like some of the patterns that I picked out for you. You can always go rogue, find your own pattern, do your own thing. Um, but in the meantime, are there any questions? Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Um, again, if you have any other questions, you can just email me. Um, if you have any concerns going through the embroidery stuff, um, let me know or watch the videos. Um, I will send out um, the link to the slides um, and the, um, the recording itself in the next day or two. Um, if you want the videos to, to do the know-how for the stitches right now. Again, it's Cutesy Crafts. Just go to her YouTube channel. She's got all of the stitches that she did for this particular pattern um, available there. So anyway. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you for coming and I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, I it was one of those things where, uh, you know, COVID made me sort of think about what we could potentially do, even though we can't technically be together. So I'm glad that you guys could come and I hope you guys make something great. And if you do make something great, um, or even if it's not great, please send me a picture of it. I would love to see it. Um, you know, I don't have to share the picture with anyone. I just am like curious. Um, so once you guys make your creations, please let me know. Very much would like to see the end product. Anyway. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and um, please stay safe out there. Bye.